Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-5. Last time, our courageous heroes met with a seedy underworld type who is now in possession of the missing box. A deal was struck, with the players agreeing to help collect on a debt owed to Johan the Lone Shark. The job seems easy enough, all they have to do is break a culprit out of the stocks in front of some guards. We rejoin the group as they put their plan in motion. Lady Irena moved up to speak with a pair of guards and lowered her hood. The two young men were immediately entranced with her soft elven features and greeted her politely. She feigned interest in a question of local law and was able to distract them as both Fargus, Stoutheart, and Cabe, Silvertongue, moved towards the barracks. Finding an unhitched chariot, they quickly moved it in front of the door, thereby blocking any exit by the troops within. Welby and Sister Elaine moved towards the shackled prisoner, but the two guards noticed and told them to step away. As the guards focused in on the pair at the stocks, Lady Arena produced a colorful globe in her hand, asking the men at arms what the item was. As they looked to her hand, the globe split into several smaller globes and began to spin around the guards' heads, causing the confusion to rain down upon the men. Okay, do it now, yelled Arena. Dworky moved up and released the latch on the stocks, thereby freeing the criminal Kelsey, who immediately stepped back and stretched out his aching muscles. The group surrounded the man, who seemed to be quite sore. Dworky stuck his finger into the large man's face and advised him that he owed money to Johan and he would be coming with the group. The retort came quickly on the end of Kelsey's fist as he smashed the rat-faced man in the jaw, knocking him dizzy and falling him to the ground. The bard and the ranger summarily jumped on the criminal, dragged him down to the ground as well. While pinned in the mud, Kelsey extended his hands out and told the party his dispute wasn't with them. Not swayed by the man's charm, the group quickly bound his arms behind his back and hoisted him onto his feet. Banging from the barracks indicated that the guards had discovered that they had been trapped and began to yell out to their two confused cohorts by the stocks. The party quickly hustled to bound Kelsey down the side of the street as people began to hear the guards yelling for help. Dworky finally shook the cobwebs off from the blow that he had received and began to insult the large fighter, telling him that he was going to get his. Oh, great, muttered Sister Elaine, and the rest of the party spotted what she noticed first. The giant ram had once again, or possibly still, had escaped. Its handlers were headed down the muddy street right towards the party. Seeing his chance, Kelsey wiggled free and kicked the rat-faced man into the path of the rampaging animal. Unable to react quickly enough, the beast plowed through the small man with a lowered head. As the group watched in shock, they observed Dworky's head explode, splitting his skull in half. Reacting quickly, the still-bound Kelsey took off running. After several moments of disbelief, the party realized that their had quarry had escaped and gave chase. The larger members of the party attempted to gain ground on the criminal, but were surprised by a set of bolas speeding past their heads, wrapping around the legs of Kelsey, who quickly tripped from the tangled rope. Cabe and Fargus dove on him, smashing the man's face into a pile of animal dung. Lady Irena and Sister Elaine looked behind them, spotting a smiling halfling with a raised fist and a GOT HIM! jubilant cry. As Cabe and Fargus wrestled with Kelsey, they took the opportunity to grind the dung into the man's face and nose deeper and deeper. The mage and cleric came running up with the rogue bringing up the rear. Sister Elaine quickly pulled out her mace and smashed Kelsey in the head, knocking him out. The guards are coming! The guards are coming! yelled out Webley O'Toole, and Lady Irena pointed out that she would take care of him. The four members of the party each took an appendage of the unconscious criminal 
and began to hustle their way to the nearby brewery. Welby threw the cloak over the man to disguise who it was. Looking back, the group noticed that the wizard cast a spell and a thick fog had fallen upon the street, blanketing everyone's vision beyond. A huge smile crossed her face as she spun around, racing back to her friends. Irena caught up to her friends quickly as they carried the heavy man into the dockside brewery. They entered the establishment and were stopped by a large man who demanded to know their business. Cabe, Silvertongue, pushed the man out of the way, yelling out, Crimson Ale, as they moved down the narrow hallway, smashing Kelsey's face along the way. As they reached the door to the back office, Fargus smashed open the heavy door with his boot, causing it to fly open. The group dragged Kelsey in and plopped him down on the rug in front of the desk, perspiration pouring off each member of the group as they doubled over, breathing heavily. Johan the Dwarf sat behind the desk holding his bodyguard's back. He calmly picked up his goblet, lifting it to be refilled. As the party caught their breath, the lone shark swiveled the red liquid around before quaffing its contents. Peering over the ornate desk, he observed the dung-covered criminal, and he sat back grinning and asked the players what took them so long. An exasperated Sister Elaine stretched out her back and began to complain loudly about the circumstance of the collection. As everyone finally got stabilized with their breath, Johan asked about Dworky. Welby stepped up and looked remorseful. Sir, started the halfling, it is with great regret that we tell you your employee is dead. During the course of bringing Kelsey here, he pushed poor Dworky in front of a giant ram. The beast hit him true and split his skull wide open in the middle of the street. We had no time to assist him as he was clearly dead. Sister Elaine also offered her apologies and pointed out that no magical cure could have saved the rat-faced man. Silence encompassed the room and the lone shark looked back to his two bodyguards. As the three of them looked at one another, they began to laugh hysterically. Kill killed by a ram? questioned Johan. That is simply hilarious. After several minutes of laughter and tears running down their faces, the men finally gathered their composure, and Johan motioned for the large bodyguards to take Kelsey. The pair grabbed the man roughly and took him out a secret side entrance. Johan reached into the drawer and pulled forth the mysterious box, tossing it to Lady Arena. Here, you certainly earned it, said the lone shark. The group looked sullen and asked about Dworky. The lone shark nodded his head and reached back into the drawer and tossed a leather pouch of coins to Fargus. Here you go. Thanks. I never really liked him. The ranger opened the bag and discovered ten gold crowns within. Surprised, Fargus began to speak but was waved off by Johan. I like you guys. You work well together. You get stuff done. I may utilize your abilities in the future. But right now I got stuff to do. Take your reward and get out. If I need you, I'll send someone after you. Puzzled, the group turned slowly and walked out of the office, then out of the brewery. Just outside, they noticed that the fog cloud spell had dissipated. Guards were milling about, asking questions of the citizens. Fargus pointed out that they should get off the street quickly, and Lady Arena pointed to the tavern across the way. The males in the group pointed out that they should avoid that area due to a small misunderstanding. A second tavern, called the Lucky Club, was spotted off the beaten path and the group opted to head into that establishment. Opening the door, they quickly discovered that there was barely any light in the building and they should be able to hide here quite well. Drinks were ordered and the group sat around the table speechless. After several minutes, Welby spoke up. He was right. We do work well as a team. Perhaps, you know, you guys might be interested? Interested in what? asked Lady Irena. Oh, well, a partnership, uttered the halfling. The group looked at each other and sipped their beverages, thinking it over. Well, it wouldn't be dull, mused Cabe the Bard. Fargus was next to speak. I wouldn't mind it but I would want to keep it within guidelines of the law. The shaking head of Sister Elaine showed agreement. 
What laws have we broken? queried the bard. Well, said the ranger, we've skipped out on our tab at the other tavern and freezed a prisoner from the stocks. I think we should pay the money we owe and then discuss the issue with the guards and ask for mercy. Well, I don't mind paying our bill. That waitress was quite nice, said Welby, but I'm not sure about turning ourselves into the guards. That seems a bit dicey at best. Elaine and Fargus shrugged their shoulders with the response of, Fine, by the halfling rogue. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.